When I was 12 years old, I discovered Minecraft for the first time. In 2013, Minecraft was absolutely huge. I was watching YouTubers like Captain Sparkles, Dan TDM, Sky Does Minecraft, Stampy Longnose, and in that summer of 2013, I figured out how to set up a server with my younger brothers, which led to me playing Minecraft six, seven, eight hours a day. I quickly became fully addicted to the game. At one point, I actually stole from my parents to upgrade the Minecraft server to a premium plan. It was starting to slow down, so I just charged an extra $10 per month to my dad's credit card, and I never told him, and I got away with it. I was so obsessed with the game, I was willing to steal $10, $20 here and there from my hardworking father to fuel my addiction. I was a complete degenerate piece of filth. But over time, through focus and dedication, I was able to transform from that loser who was playing video games eight hours a day all the way to a productive software engineer who codes for eight hours a day. In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how I did just that. Principle number one is that you need to find cooler addictions. The reason why video games are so addicting, especially to young men, is because they give you this illusion of progress. As a man, some of the greatest feelings you'll ever experience is when you're leveling up at something you actually care about. Your crush finally said yes to go to prom with you, or you did incredible on that physics test. Video games, they give you that same feeling of status building, but it only exists within that universe of the video game. You might think it's awesome to have a really high Fortnite KD ratio or a butterfly knife in CSGO, but in reality, nobody actually gives a fuck. I had this realization when I was moving from middle school to high school when I discovered women for the first time. I actually remember the very moment it happened. I was sitting on my bed playing on my iPad and I had this sudden thought that just came out of nowhere. Damn, Michaela has gotten really, really sexy and I need her to like me. So that day I started texting her and I let it slip that I played Minecraft all afternoon. And she immediately replied by saying that her crush was in the drama club and he had spent his whole day working on a musical and she thought he was super cool because he was actually doing something with his summer. In that moment, I realized very profoundly and powerfully that video games were not cool and that being good at Minecraft meant absolutely nothing. It would not serve me at all in this new game I was about to enter. My strategy had to change. I needed to become sexy for Michaela. Me being a horny 13 year old was the first step in moving my addiction from video games straight into an addiction for female validation. The truth is that I didn't need willpower, discipline, nothing. I was in a hurry to not be that degenerate gamer. From that moment on, Minecraft itself just felt disgusting. Now I'm not saying become obsessed with women. What I am saying is that it becomes much easier to break one addiction when you funnel all of that desire and energy into a completely separate obsession, especially when your new desire completely contradicts your previous one. I had this brand new passion to become attractive to the girls in high school and being a gamer just didn't align with that. I actually had this newfound hatred of video games because they were keeping me this chubby loser and I had to move forward. Principle number two is that you need to treat your life like a video game. You need to gamify your life. Here are four aspects of video games that make them so damn addicting. Number one, clear objectives with immediate feedback. You always, always know what your next step has to be. Every video game gives you very clear goals. There's zero ambiguity and confusion. In Pokemon, the next step is to nearly always go to the next town and fight the next gym leader. If you just beat Brock in Pewter City, now it's time to head over to Cerulean City and fight Misty. Number two, progression and rewards. Video games always have some kind of progression and grinding involved. You need to level up your Pokemon enough to take on the Elite Four or the next gym leader, and the feedback is immediate. If you're not strong enough, then Koga's level 43 Weezing is going to annihilate your level 33 Ivysaur. Number three, balanced challenge. Video games always make it so that the next thing you have to do is very slightly above your current capabilities. Everything you have to do lives in that Goldilocks zone of being right outside of your reach. You know you have the capability to achieve it, but you just have to grind a little bit more. And finally, most video games have an aspect of social interaction and community baked in. For me, I was so obsessed with Minecraft, mainly because all of my friends were also playing Minecraft, 
and the only way to elevate my status in the group was to get extremely good at that game and keep on mining for diamonds. I craved their validation and respect, and the only way to get it was to keep on playing. So how can we take all four of these principles and fold them into real life useful skills? I recently did this with Leap Code. I'm sure you guys already know, but Lead Code is this website where you can solve difficult coding problems to prepare for interviews at companies like Google and Meta. And a few years ago, I used to be completely shit at coding interviews. My freshman year of college, I was interviewing for my first internship at this company called John Deere, and I was given a Lead Code Easy valid parentheses. It wasn't just an easy, it was an easy, easy. Nearly every CS major can solve this problem, but I couldn't. But over the last four years, I consistently leveled up a lead code. I found the simplest problem, Tucson, and I spent hours solving it. And when I finally did, it felt incredible. It gave me the same feeling as grinding and improving at a video game. I slowly progressed from not even being able to solve a lead code easy all the way through trying and consistently solving mediums, and now I'm at the point where I can even solve some hards. Let's map the gaming principles I discussed earlier onto my strategy with lead code. First, clear objective. That was the neat code 150 for me. This is a list of excellent problems that are selected so you can work linearly through them and you learn everything you need to know. I knew exactly what question I had to solve next. There's no ambiguity about it. And every time I solved a problem correctly, my leap code ranking would go up and the number of problems solved on my account would also increase. That was my sense of reward and progression. In terms of balancing challenge, I never did any problems that I knew I couldn't solve. Dude, I never just tried a hard randomly because I knew that I would fail and then I would become depressed and hate myself. Finally, I started a leap code club at my university where I invited a bunch of friends to join and we would solve problems together and actually compete with each other to see who could solve it first. That gave me that sense of community and social interaction. I harnessed that desire to grind and level up, and instead of throwing that all the way into Elden Ring or Valorant, I harnessed it towards a skill that was valuable, and it paid off. Through treating my life like a video game, I was able to get internships at Shopify, Amazon, and now a full-time software engineering job. Principle number three is to constantly reinvent yourself. Here's the thing, you could successfully do what I did. You could transform your video game addiction into being a software engineer and coding eight hours a day. At least that's better. I mean, you're getting paid, you're being productive all day long. Yes, being a software engineer is a good next step, but there are still a lot of software engineers who are kind of degenerates. They go back to playing video games all night, they put on weight, they become obese. The key is to not stop that initial momentum. You finally found yourself a stable career, what more can you do? The truth is that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And in order to not fall and return to temptation, you have got to keep going. For me, every three to six months, I put myself into this new arena where I am terrible. I try to find an area where I am horrible. I'm really bad. Recently, I've gotten into hip hop dance. I saw some Michael Jackson video on YouTube and I don't know, it was one of those things where you see something and you immediately want to try it. So I went to this hip hop dance class and yeah, I was by far the worst person there. And it was pretty embarrassing, I'm not gonna lie. But I walked out of there with a smile on my face, with this grin ear to ear because I had found my next challenge. I'd found the next thing that I wanted to grind and become good at. The same thing happened with weightlifting. I used to be extremely unathletic. Every day during gym class, the boys would be playing basketball and the girls would be walking around and socializing. And guess who I went with? Every day I would go walk around with the girls Honestly, I wouldn't even be talking to them. I would just be walking behind the group of girls while all of my friends, my little brothers, were playing basketball in the center. It was a little depressing. But after graduating high school, I knew this had to change. I could no longer remain that nerdy, weird looking, unathletic kid. So I started watching fitness YouTubers like Jeff Nippard, Athlean X, and slowly over the years, I put on some muscle. Last year, I got a strength coach and that changed everything. I actually put on 25 pounds and worked up to a 365 deadlift by current max. Last year, powerlifting became that next goal I was working towards and it was awesome. I'm at the point where much larger people will walk up to me in the gym and ask for a spot. And it means that I have enough of a base level of muscle where they trust me to not let them die. It feels pretty good. Recently, I even met someone I knew in high school 
at the gym for the first time in four or five years. And he looked at me and was like, dude, I don't even recognize you. You look amazing. I'm not afraid to say it. I love the gym. It's one of my favorite things that I do every day, but I never would have discovered it if I was afraid to try something new and reinvent myself. There's something about picking up a new skill and grinding at it for years that satisfies this inner desire for progress. By doing this every six months, I've kept my monkey brain satisfied, thus completely eliminating the desire to return to video games. All right, if you've gotten this far into the video and you want to hear more specifically how I directly converted my desire for video games into a drive to become better at coding, Here's a little quick tip for you. You want to use your love of the game despite your interest in coding. Believe it or not, the first code I ever wrote was because I was trying to create a mod for Minecraft. I had a friend who learned Java through Minecraft tutorials and I was trying to copy him. So if you're addicted to video games, but you want to learn how to code, I would recommend coming up with cool projects that actually relate to the game you're addicted to. Basically funnel that desire for the video game into something productive like learning to code, something adjacent to the game. And trust me, this works. That that friend of mine who learned Java through Minecraft, he just finished up an internship at Apple. If you're new here, my name is Amon. I'm a former computer science student and current software engineer. And on this channel, we discuss self-improvement topics focused through the lens of tech and coding. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Also, if you sign up to my email newsletter down below, I'll send you this completely for free ultimate checklist for landing a software engineering job or internship in 2023. The link is in the description. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.